Nice, nice. So, I mean, you guys, obviously, content is kind of part of your, your overall branding. And it, people hear content, let's just define, let's unpack that a little bit. Because, again, content can be so many yeah, different things. Yeah. Content could be a podcast. It could be video. It could be books. It could be mm-hmm. blogs. So, when you're talking about, like, creating content, like, what kind of system and what kind of content are you developing? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we see it a little bit different, I think, uh, with the conversations that we've had in the last couple of years. Um, the reaction that we get is like, oh, that's a, maybe a different, very um, original way to see it, right? We see it as content ecosystem, right? The podcast is our main pillar, uh, main be, mainly because it's the one platform that we that we were able to be consistent over two years, right? Before that, we tried many different things. We try to like mimic and copy what other people were, were, were doing. You know, normally people start there and it's, it's hard to sustain, but the podcast became this one pillar that we would do every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? And until now, two years in a row, we, we've done it. And uh, from that podcast, then we can create other assets that then become part of the content ecosystem. Mm. So that content ecosystem can be Instagram posts, Facebook posts, uh, the pod- anything related to the podcast, audio, video, clean cut on YouTube, like all these little pieces that add to it, but it didn't start there. It just started with, with publishing on one thing. So mm. that's one point of view. And also how we've been able to to attach the podcast to the revenue side and the sales system on our business because we needed to when we started the show, mm-hmm. it was in a in a place where we really needed to save the business. We had about 60 days of runway. A lot of the business that we had at the time was local businesses. And we're like, what is the fastest path to a relationship that could potentially be a client, a referral, something like that? And the podcast allowed us to to do that, right? So that's in the last two years, that has been the way or the the the, the background on yeah. how we've been able to tackle content. I just want to add a, like a few things in there. A lot of people see content mostly as a vehicle of promotion, right? On the sense of like, I need to create content to drive traffic to whatever it is that I'm building. Um, we see that as a collateral benefit, right? Building content, driving traffic, to your offers, your website, whatever it is that you're trying to drive traffic to is a collateral benefit of producing good content. But for us, content is mainly a great way to distill ideas, to build a strong and powerful network. I mean, we wouldn't know you if it wasn't because you came to to our podcast, right? And we actually, once we connected, we saw that we had people in common that have been on the podcast, right? So that... That has shifted through time. Obviously, we understand that, yes, content can be just strictly used as promotional, but we see it mostly as the collateral benefit because our main purpose is on developing these relationships, right? And from that, a whole bunch of other benefits like come out of that. That's not, I mean, it's sexy when you, when you describe it that way, because I mean, right now you're using podcasting as that, that formula, that keystone, right? But you could mm-hmm. easily swap out that podcast for a YouTube channel, or you could easily swap out that podcast for um, video blogging or just writing books. And then from that content that you get yeah. from that book or from that video podcast or that video um, blog, then you have all these other elements of content. And mm-hmm. essentially what you're doing is you're setting up a pipeline of content. And that's the biggest issue that most people are they're, they're suffering from with social media. It's kind of like, well, I don't know what to post. I don't know. I don't have enough content to post. What can I post? And they may be sitting on hours and hours of content, but they don't know how to repurpose that content. So what you guys are self-defining is is taking content and repurposing it to where you're creating your own ecosystem to then build revenue. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely. One one maybe asterisk in there instead of uh, repurposing, we like to call it multi-purposing, right? Because it's with mm-hmm. very it's it's with intention. Repurposing uh, is something that you create, and then you're like, oh, how can like, what else can we do with this thing? And it's kind of like an afterthought, right? Like, uh, at the, and at the beginning, it started that way. But then after that is, okay, how can we be clinical with the approach that we take with the show, for example, right? Like, are we actually doing guest assets for our guests? Like, how can we leverage uh, this experience that we have with them? How can we actually create an experience that also involves content, right? And it's constantly evolving in that sense. Um, there's also parts of those videos and very specific questions that maybe are not just for social, but maybe for sales pages or different landing pages that, that we might have right now or in the future. Right. So the idea is to start tackling this, uh, remove the friction for production as much as possible. And then once you get going with consistency, start looking in ways like, okay, this is the main objective. How else can I leverage 
mm-hmm. this one hour that maybe I'm spending with somebody that I've tried to communicate with for a long time or with this idea that I've been trying to express for a long time. Right? Uh, one example of this has been uh, we had an interview with an incredible friend now. And through that interview, this concept of publishing pyramid came up. She, she asked this question. We're like, how do you guys kind of tackle content? And we started describing this situation. And this con- concept came up in that interview. After the interview, we sat down. And by the way, this was like a 10-minute interview. We sat down and we debriefed. And we're like, wow, that was incredible. And that concept of publishing pyramid has become one of our keynotes, has become a program, has become a great resource for introducing people into our service, into the things that we do, because um, it's a framework that has allowed us and it really became the framework for us to go off of in any type of content production side of things. So it's like, okay, can we look forward other than that just social content, right? That is so important, mm-hmm. right? And we have to set up a system and a process to make sure that that continues consistently mm-hmm. at a different level, right? Depending on where you are uh, in your in your journey. But at the same time, it's like, can we actually do it consciously and not as an afterthought? Um, because if it's done af- like an afterthought, probably we won't put in the care and the love that that, that needs to, to, nice. to nice. live. 